Hey, Chris here. Today I want to show you my 17 tips to stay sane while backpacking. Let's go. So if you're like me, you ended your first backpacking trip by stumbling back to the car with wet and achy feet, your back was sore, and you were tangled in some sort of backpacking gadget. That's how I ended my first trip three years ago. And after three years of hiking on the weekends, I think I've got a pretty good system down. So I wrote some tips. They work really well for me and I hope they will work well for you. And while we're at it, you can join me as we climb the beautiful Mount San Jacinto. First tip, check the weather. You just need to remember one website in this whole video. That's weather.gov, weather.gov. Just open up that website and click on your backpacking destination and it will tell you the forecast for that specific spot. And you get a little practice learning how to find your destination on the map. And uh, the weather is the number one biggest factor in deciding how your trip will go. So knowing what to expect is really gonna help you be prepared for what's to come. Tip number two is to slow down. So people are always asking, well, how fast should I walk on flat ground? How about uphill? How about at a 5% decline? And I thought that Ray Jardine said something very profound to answer those questions. Your pace should be dictated by your heart rate. So walk as slow as you need to go to keep a comfortable heart rate and prevent yourself from burning out. It's all about just not burning out and walking at an equilibrium pace. If we're walking so slow, how do we get anywhere? And that's tip number three for you, which is always be moseying. Moseying. We reduce the speed and walk at our equilibrium pace, which means that the distance we travel is decreased. So the way we make up for that is increase the time that we're traveling. Um, and if you're walking at a comfortable pace, it should be okay to just walk longer without taking breaks. Just, just cruise and mosey through nature. <laughs> Here's a big hill, which brings me to tip number four, which is to take baby steps. Walking uphill, just take comfortable steps. A lot of people, when they're trying to be macho walking up hills, they take massive lunging steps like this, and they, they scale entire rocks in one step, but that's not sustainable. Just take little baby steps, you know, weave your way around the obstacles and find the most gradual way up things. Even if it feels like you're taking more steps, it's more sustainable. Tip number five is to take breaks at full speed. So as soon as you decide to take a break, no chit chat or dilly dally, immediately get off your feet and get on your butt to let your feet relax. And bonus points if you can elevate your feet a bit to help reduce swelling. So remember, no standing, only walking or sitting. Catch you later. So tip number six is to wear trail runners, breathable trail runners. So an army study said that weight you carry on your feet is five times as fatiguing as weight that you carry on your back. And these trail runners are gonna be um, one to two pounds lighter than traditional waterproof hiking boots, which means it'll feel like five to 10 pounds less weight to make you tired. Plus this breathable mesh will help your feet help the sweat evaporate and keep your feet cool and dry, which is really important for um, not getting blisters. And I also like wearing light socks, again, um, to keep my feet cool. Uh, hey, look, I found the cable car. Look at that. Tip number seven is to only bring one set of clothes. Um, so no, no extra shirts or pants or anything. Uh, maybe an extra pair of socks is okay, or boxers. So this will save you one or two pounds. And every time you open your backpack, there'll be less junk in there to, to rifle through to find what you're looking for. I'm pretty high up now. There's Gene Peak, about 10,000 feet tall. And down the hill, I can see Palm Springs. Hello. Hey, I'm leaving any of my water problems by melting some snow. At the summit! Beep, 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 beep. Here we are at the top. Thanks for coming with me all the way up and listening to me rant. And I'm not going to stop ranting because my next tip is tip number 10. Get that stove, the caldera cone. Look at how it's stable it is. It's so pleasant to not need to hold on to your stinking pot all the time. It's making me water right now. Look at all the windmills down there.
I'm cruising down looking for water at a comfortable spot to sleep, which brings me to my next tip, which is don't set up your tent, sleep outside. I love sleeping outside, it's my favorite part of camping. Almost as good as sleeping outside is not packing up a tent in the morning. That's not a caterpillar, that's my sleeping bag. And I'm sleeping under some healthy trees for some extra warmth and protection. And this is uh, how I love to sleep outside. Good morning. So the next tip has to do with getting ready to go in the morning. Something that used to really annoy me with camping was all the stuff sacks for each individual piece of gear. And um, when you're packing up, like matching each item with each stuff sack and getting the optimally correct fold so that the, the gear can fit into that, into those tidy stuff sacks. So I suggest just ditch all that and get a trash compactor bag like this. I got a five, five of these on Amazon that I've been using forever. Um, and then you just throw everything in there and it's so much more pleasant. You just throw it in the bag <laughs> and get on with your life. Tip number, I don't know anymore. <laughs> and that is to walk before breakfast. When you wake up in the morning, that's gonna be the coldest part of the day. So you could kind of huddle around your, your hot coffee and desperately try to warm your fingers up, or you can just walk for 15 minutes and your whole body will warm up and the air will get a little bit warmer too. Got Mount San Gorgonio, Mount San Antonio, and Saddleback Mountain. My next tip is to get yourself a pair of these trekking poles. These ones cost $30 on Amazon and they let your arms uh, take some of the load off your legs. So when you're walking, they can push forward. When you're climbing, they can help lift your body up. And then when you're going down, you can save your knees a little bit. I like to cut the straps off. You don't need the straps, you're not skiing. And that way, when, you're, uh, when you want some water, you can do a little bit of this. Grab your water bottle, take a sip. Hey look, I'm a PCG section hiker, oh yeah. All right, final tip. My final tip is to eat and drink like it's your job. All day, your goal is to drink about four liters of water and eat one to two pounds of food. I really liked um, at the end of Liz Thomas's book when she said that almost any mental or physical problem you have can probably be improved by eating food and drinking water. Cheers. Let's go that way. Doink. Hey, thanks for watching this long. I've made it back to my car. I hope that these tips help you stay sane in the outdoors. Um, I wanna give a big hat tip to Andrew Skirka, Ray Jardine, Mike Clellan, and Liz Thomas. Their books uh, inspired a lot of these tips. So I'm gonna link their books in the video description. Have a nice one, bye.